Jared, um, great house. Uh, it's perfect for landscape lighting. I think it'd be awesome. Um, it looks like you're planning on just lighting the front here. Um, I would definitely go with nine lights. And uh, the reason for that is I would have accent lights that would highlight um, on both sides of the windows and one up the middle. I would highlight both of these columns as well as the front entrance ones and then on both sides of the window as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for sure. Um, and I'll show you a way uh, to do that and save a little money. And then as for getting under the sidewalk, um, if the transformer's over here, then yeah, you'll want to come, uh, come around, get these lights and then uh, come around the front here. And typically what we can do is usually, you know, you can go and rent a tool, uh, something like this. It's called a Borit tool. Um, you can go and Google that to see if somebody in your area maybe has one. Uh, the other option, usually what we do is we'll actually just dig a stretch of sod back a little bit and then dig down a little bit and basically just hammer a pipe uh, underneath the sidewalk until we get to the other end. So um, that's probably the easiest way if you don't want to have to go rent a tool um, unless there's like a small crack or somewhere that you can somehow slip the wire through. But um, if you're going and ordering the starter kit, what I would do is uh, order the starter kit and then rather than just going and adding a ninth light by um, buying one of the regular lights, actually just buy one of the try it before you buy it lights. Um, basically what that is is that's a light that we send people to test and see the quality they get it at a discounted rate shipping's free and everything um, but if you know you need nine lights anyway i would just order that one instead because everybody can order one and it's you know 30 bucks cheaper than buying the regular one because we give it to you at a discounted rate so um, hopefully that helps uh, if you have any other questions just email me back thanks jared thanks again for watching guys as we show you how to easily install low voltage landscape lighting so there's various different lights you can look at. The most popular is easily the up light, accent light, or bullet light, often used to highlight different trees and, and features in your yard. Another very popular light is a wash light, often used to highlight the fronts of homes and beautiful stonework. Uh, path and garden lighting is also very popular to use to light walkways and garden areas and plant material down below as well as hardscape lighting, which is used in different kinds of hardscapes, as well as on fences and decks, and can also create some cool effects. And a great way to see what looks good is just to take a flashlight or, or any kind of light around at night, shine it on a few of those features, and really see what looks good and where you're going to position those lights. I strongly recommend looking at LED energy efficient bulbs for all of your landscape lighting. It saves on power and it lasts a long, long time. You see they only use 40 watts, 260 lumens is very bright, and they still have that warm white or warm white look that you would find in an incandescent fixture. And if you have an existing landscape lighting system that is incandescent, it's very easy to retrofit with LED bulbs. Again, just to save power and not have to be changing bulbs all the time. What we often recommend is go and find really good quality outdoor rated LED bulbs and then go find really good incandescent fixtures and just marry the two together and retrofit your incandescent fixtures with really good quality LED bulbs and it'll help bring the cost down rather than going and buying a fully integrated LED fixture uh, which looks good and lasts a long time but they do cost a lot more than doing this and just finding a really good fixture and retrofitting it with a really good bulb. So once you know where you're going to put your lights and you have your lights picked out the next step is to start placing your lights. So you have determined where they're going to go, start by digging just a small hole and just preliminarily placing your lights. I recommend using a rubber mallet so that you can really pound those ground stakes in and give them some good stability. Screw your light in afterwards so you can really get it in there. Make sure everything's level. And then from there, you start laying out your wire once you got all your lights in place. And be sure to leave extra wire at every fixture just to give yourself some wiggle room. Connecting the lights, it's quite simple. When you make your splice in your wire, you'll have a wire going in and a wire going out for each connection, as well as your fixture wire. And at every light, you're going to have two of those connections. I recommend a good waterproof connection, either a, a gel filled snap lock connector or these uh, gel filled DBRY connectors that come in two parts that you have a moret that screws on and keeps the wires tight, and then it fills. The wire fills into a gel filled tube that keeps the water out. So just be sure to make sure you're getting good waterproof connections that keep the wires 
free of the elements as well as keep them from pulling apart. The next step is selecting your transformer. Uh, very easy to do if you look on any bulb that you purchase it should give you the wattage but if you have a four and a half watt bulb and you have 10 of those that's going to give you 45 watts which means you want to select a transformer that's just slightly bigger than that and I recommend trying to find a transformer that has a photo cell as well as a timer built into it for easy use. Uh, they're very easy to wire in your transformer depending on the transformer you have it's generally going to have a common tap and a 12 volt tap. You just put one wire into each tap, screw them down tight, mount your transformer close to your GFCI receptacle so that you can get power, plug it in, turn it on, and go and make sure all your lights work before you start burying any wire. So once you've checked all your lights and everything works, you can start burying them. One thing I would recommend is looking at the Weon Outdoor Wi-Fi Switch. It's a great tool if you want to make your landscape lighting system totally smart and Wi-Fi operated. Uh, to bury the wires, very easy. With a flat-ended shovel, creating a trench that's six to eight inches deep, spreading the turf open and pushing that wire down and stomping it down within no time at all. It looks like you haven't even been there. And in the mulch, it's just a matter of pulling it back and creating a, a path to lay down that wire, stapling it down and burying everything over that. So hopefully that helped. And if you have any questions, by all means, you can always reach out to us and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching that video. I hope you guys got some great ideas for your own do-it-yourself landscape lighting projects. If you want your own free consultation video, like I said before, email me your pictures at cal at lightingdoctor.ca or go and visit us at lightingdoctor.ca and be sure to check out our Try It Before You Buy a Light. Again, where you get one premium grade fixture and a King Innovation Instalight battery operated demo kit that you can go and test those lights out on your property before you make any big purchases. So I hope to see you guys again soon. And again, go get your free consultations by emailing your pictures or visit us at lightingdoctor.ca. Thanks so much for watching.